How do you buy companies like a billionaire? How do you handle trades that have massively gone against you? What strike prices should you be selling your options at? All of these questions are going to be answered in today's video. I'm going to do that by sharing multiple trades that address all these questions. There's lots of good information in this video. I'm excited to share it with you, so let's get started. I am Randy Perez. I'm a 21 plus year real estate investor as well as stock and option trader. You're gonna get a ton of valuable information in today's video. I'm going to talk through several trades as well as the lessons that we can learn from each one of these trades. I encourage you, if you're not already subscribed to the channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button as well as the bell notification so you get a notice every time we produce a video. Our goal is to produce at least one a week. And stay tuned until the end of this video because I'm excited to share a company with you that I've just started purchasing some in my retirement account as well as selling some options on my main trading account. It's a company that I like to think of that billionaires would own. When I think about all the wealthy investors that I've read about over the years, the wealthy individuals that I know personally, this is the kind of company that they all like to own. We've closed out several worthless positions and I won't go through those. You'll see them, they're circled there on the screen. We closed them out because they were, only had 10 to 20% left and premiums, so there's no need in holding those for several weeks. And open new positions. We're gonna talk about some of the new positions that we open now. The first new position I want to talk about is a company that no doubt most of us have heard of, and that's Aflac. Many people know it because the duck that walks around the commercial setting Aflac. It's an international supplemental insurance company that covers specific disease and illnesses such as cancer. I actually have a family member that has been fighting cancer for over nine years, and they have an Aflac policy, and they just rave about the company. So anytime a company's customers speak good about it, that's a company that I want to own. Aflac is a Fortune 500 company that was founded in 1955. They have been growing their dividend since 1983. 75% of their income comes from Japan and the rest mainly from the US. Now it's interesting that 95% of Japanese keep their policies on average for 20 years. Since this is a product that Aflac sells that's considered a side product, it's not the main focus of a lot of insurers. So why is this important? Well, it allowed Aflac to grow their expertise as well as their market share over the years without threat of serious competitors. Now competitors are starting to enter this space, but Aflac has a big head start on them. The current cash payout ratio is only 14.5%, so they have plenty of room to increase their dividend. As such, when I saw the stock pull back a little bit, I sold the July 40 puts and got $1.47 per share. I started with a very small position, and if the stock continues to decline, then I'll add to that position. Looking at the chart, it seems to have found decent support in the $35 to $40 price range. And if the stock gets put into my account, then I'll just begin to collect those dividends that they've been paying for decades and start selling call options against the position. Now moving on to the next trade is Kraft Heinz, ticker symbol KHC. Now Kraft Heinz has been on quite a ride over the past few years. It's the fifth largest food maker in the world and the third largest in the US. In fact, their products have sales of over 25 billion a year. These are products that people like and will continue to buy. I started trading my position in January of this year after the stock had taken a huge dive from $93 in 2017 all the way down to around $20. I began selling put options in the stock earlier this year. I'm not 100% sure that Kraft Heinz has stopped this downward movement, but it seems to at least be trying to level off and stabilize and maybe reverse direction. It's been consolidating in the $20 to $30 price range for about a year. Either way, if the stock is put into my account, I'm happy to own it. It pays a nice 5.1% dividend, and I'll just begin selling call options against the stock as well as collecting the dividend. So here, I just rolled the position I was already in. I bought back the June 27 and a half put options and sold the July 32 and a half put options for a credit of 85 cents per share. This equates to a 31% cash on cash return by rolling this position out 30 more days. The next trade is the stock I spoke about in our last video, ticker symbol LAZ, Lazard. This is a stock that I want to own for the long term. Its history goes back to the year 1848. Revenue is almost evenly split between financial advisory, such as acquisition and restructuring advisory, which makes it money in bear markets, and asset management. Asset management has an international focus that's geared mainly toward institutional clients. 
60% of the revenue comes from the Americas and the rest is international. So I like that international exposure that Lazar provides for me. They have offices in over 40 cities in over 25 countries and they have over 2,900 employees. And currently they're paying 6.7% in their dividends. Lazar was put into my account at the $40 strike price and it crashed way past there. I've been selling call options and collecting dividends since then. Now Lazar Simic is trying to come back. If you look at the charts here, it looks like it's wanting to climb. So I had orders out there to roll that short strike price that I had sold up to a higher strike price. And that's exactly what happened here. I was able to buy to close the June 29 call option and sell to open the July $31 call option and actually get a little bit of credit of five cents. So no real cash here, but I was able to roll my short call position up by $2. So I'm happy to keep collecting this nice dividend. And at the same time, I was able to move my short strike price up about 7% to take advantage of upward movement if the stock continues to move higher. The next stock pretty much needs no introduction. Everyone's heard of this, ticker symbol T, known as AT&T. AT&T is a dividend aristocrat that seems to be trying to stabilize. I like the telecom industry right now. It's a nice stable business that people need in good and in bad times. With the stock looking like it's trying to bottom around 27 and a half, I sold a new put position on June 3rd. It looked like there was going to be good support in the 50 day moving average, but we'll have to see if that support holds around that moving average. There also seems to be some nice accumulation in the 27 and a half to $30 price range, as you can see on the charts here. So I felt good selling the put at $30. I feel comfortable owning this 6.8% dividend paying company. If it gets assigned to me, then I'll just begin to sell some call options. I was able to collect 88 cents per share by selling the July 30 put options. This equates to 24% cash on cash annualized return. Now our next to the last stock before I get to that stock I was telling you about earlier that I'm excited to share with you is WP Carry, ticker symbol WPC. It's another new position to replace some of the ones that I closed out that were nearly worthless. WPC is an exciting addition both to my retirement account and here to my main trading account. It was founded back in 1973. It's raised its dividends for over 20 straight years. It's a triple net lease and sell lease back REIT. They own over 1,100 properties in 25 countries. It's a very diversified portfolio. No tenant generates more than 4% of their revenue. So they're well diversified in a tenant base as well. They have multiple property types, including industrial, office, retail, and storage. 37% of their sales come from outside the U.S., primarily in Western and Northern Europe. Even during the Great Recession in 2010, the occupancy never went below 96.6%. On average, their leases are 10 and a half years. And the lease expiration schedule is staggered really nice in that over the next three years, at most, 7% of the leases will come up for renewal. As such, it's a company that I really wanted to own. And I've been buying some in my retirement account, and now I've begun selling some puts here in my main trading account. WP Carney seems to have formed a support base around the 50 day moving average. It is bumping up against the 200 moving average on the weekly chart. So that should provide some resistance, but that might keep it from climbing too much. I feel like there's good accumulation between $55 and $65 per share. So I sold a $60 strike price put options and received $1.75 per share or 25% cash on cash annualized return. The last stock I want to talk to you about is one that I mentioned in my last video, and that's ExxonMobil. ExxonMobil is one of the last few oil companies that I own in my portfolio. I don't really want to own a whole lot of oil companies anymore, but I do want to keep ExxonMobil in my portfolio. The stock has been trending up nicely since it bottomed out in March and April, and it's been climbing pretty good. So I don't want the stock price to get past my short call options where the stock gets called away from me. As such, I bought back the June $50 strike call price and had to roll out 60 days to the August 52 and a half calls, but I was able to get a credit of 31 cents. So I was able to roll my short strike price up 5% and still pocket 31 cents on the transaction that's covered by my 400 shares of ExxonMobil that I currently own. And I'll continue to collect dividends. As a matter of fact, I collected a dividend on the stock just a few days ago. For the 400 shares that we own of ExxonMobil, they paid us $348 as our little piece of ownership in the oil company. It looks like ExxonMobil might be stuck between the 50 and 200 day moving average, which is in between the $45 and $58 prices. And it also looks like it might be bumping up against the 50 moving average on the weekly chart 
in the $57 to $58 range. So I feel comfortable selling the 52 and a half call options that expire in two months because I don't see it shooting way past the $57 strike price if it does get to that price in the next 60 days. Now I know this has been a lot to throw at you, so if you need to rewind the video, feel free to. We'll be here, just rewind it and rewatch the different segments that you have interest in. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I'll be glad to address whatever questions you have. Now for the exciting part of this video for me is what I've been waiting to tell you about, which is the new position that I found that I'm, I'm really excited about it. To begin with, let me tell you about how this trade went bad. I've been selling put options in a MLP pipeline company, ticker symbol MPLX, and the stock crashed on us. With oil crashing, the stock price plummeted, and it went down from its high in the mid-30s last year to under $7 in March. Now, I don't believe this company is going out of business, but when it did crash that hard, I didn't like the way the charts looked, and I also reviewed the financials, and I didn't particularly care for what the financials looked like either. This is where understanding how technical analysis works. I knew that I wanted to get out of this company several months ago, but I also knew that the company would more than likely bounce. And once I saw it start hitting in an uptrend, I decided to wait until it hit a stronger trend line, which would keep it down. Let me show you what I mean by that. As you can see on the daily chart, I knew that MPLX was in a nice uptrend. Since April, when it crossed the 50-day moving average, every time it came down to that 50-day moving average trend line, it bounced off of it and go back up. So I simply kept an eye on it and waited for it to hit a stronger trend line, which would make it peak out. Because when you look at the weekly chart, it's pretty obvious that MPLX is still in a downtrend. So a week and a half ago, you can see that it began to approach the 200-day moving average on the daily chart. And on the 50-week moving average chart, it began to hit that 50 week moving average trend line. Now I know from experience that when it hits two trend lines like that, it's very likely that the stock will, best case scenario, pause and head sideways for a while, but more likely to hit it and bounce off and maybe try and break through a couple times. And it may be able to break through, but in the end, I don't really want to own this company anymore. I don't want to put it in my account anymore. So I wanted to get out of the position and enter a new position. I wanted the company that I swapped MPLX out for to have a nice, strong dividend. I want it to be a strong company I can buy and not have to worry about. I want it to be diversified. I really want it to be international. And I found that in Brookfield Infrastructure Partners. It's one of the fastest growing and most diversified utilities in the world. In my opinion, it's an awesome company. Now please do your own research on this company. Please don't take my word for it. I'm not a financial advisor. I can't foretell the future. So please ask your financial advisor about it. Or if you do your own advising, Please do your own research. Don't just take my word for it. I'm simply sharing my journey here and giving my personal opinion, which could totally be wrong. Brookfield is structured similar to an MLP. It owns dozens of infrastructure assets over five continents. Some examples of the partnerships they have include electrical transmission lines, railroads, toll roads, natural gas pipelines, global ports, telecom towers, data centers, water infrastructure, and fiber optic lines. No division is more than 20% of their cash flow, and 95% of the firm's cash flow either comes from regulated industries or are secured by long-term fixed rate contracts. Now, I don't know about you, but that kind of stuff gets me excited because it sounds a whole lot like stability and like a very strong, well-diversified company. A lot of the assets it owns are things that people have to have. As such, this company will make money no matter what's going on in the economy, in my opinion. It's sponsored by Brookfield Asset Management, which is the world's oldest and largest real estate, utility, infrastructure, and private equity investment firm. It dates back 120 years and has over 300 billion in assets under management. They have access to one of the world's most experienced and disciplined management teams that oversees the firm and can source profitable infrastructure deals around the world. In fact, management makes sure that they retain 35% of their cash flow to invest in growth projects. I really like that. Their primary goal is to opportunistically buy assets that are mispriced. I really like that also. That means that when an asset is out of favor, Brookfield Infrastructure is buying it. They have access to fairly low borrowing costs, which helps reduce their cost of capital and increase their profitability. This is because of the conservative nature of their balance sheet. When they use debt, it's generally non-recourse. In fact, 85% of their debt is non-recourse. So basically, this firm has built a shield around its cash flow. 
Brookfield Infrastructure expects to invest about $700 million annually over the next five years in growth projects. This means that as an owner of the company, our income should grow. And the firm believes that with inflation, as well as these growth projects, it will result in a 6 to 9% growth in cash flow over the long term. They expect to increase the distribution to us, the owners, at a similar pace of 5 to 9% per year. I love this company. I love the dividends they pay. I love the growth potential. I love their cash flows. And so I'd love to own it. Now understand that it is structured similar to an MLP. So there are a little bit of tax complexities when it comes to filing your taxes every year, but nothing that a tax preparer couldn't easily handle. As such, I swapped out my position in a wheat company, MPLX, by selling some puts in Brookfield Infrastructure. The one thing I don't like about Brookfield Infrastructure is that the option volume is relatively low. This results in greater spreads between the bidding and the ask price. But I like the company so much that I sold a put in my account to generate some cash flow until the stock gets put into my account. So I took an opening position by selling put options that were relatively deep in the money to offset the cash I had spent by buying back the MPLX short put option. Now I could have used leverage to buy more of this position, but I don't like to use margin. I don't like to use leverage. I'll simply increase the position as some of my other positions become worthless down the road. If you found value in this video, please hit the subscribe button as well as the bell notification. We try to put out a video every week and you don't want to miss the videos coming out next. It's a video on how to trade these high flying companies like Amazon, Facebook, Tesla, and Boeing. How can you trade those companies with downside protection built into the position as well as receive cash flow from these non-dividend paying companies? In the next video, I'm going to show you how I do it. So until next time, happy investing and we'll see you again soon.